I trust that you are doing good. Karibu sana to my show today. Now, the president is about to embark on a four-day working tour of central Kenya, yeah, his home province. And so many things have been happening on the political scene. I believe some people have also displayed clear signs of being very jittery about this trip. So, what can we expect in central Kenya over the next few days? Drama being drama? Ama just normal? <laughs> Find out from this show today. Even more important, what political tactics is the president going to use in a region that has so far displayed a lot of hostility towards the BBI, the handshake, and his administration? Oh yes, his own home area has displayed all that. And we know that since the beginning of time, kings have relied on wise counsel. We know the president has got some excellent political advisors. And if I can give you a sneak preview, the rabbit they're going to pull out of the hat to reverse things in central. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it is quite something. So, my friends, you really have a great show to look forward to. Karibu sana. As I record this, President Huru Mwigai Kenyatta is already at Sagana State Lodge preparing to launch his four-day working tour of Central Province. Sagana State Lodge has quite a history behind it. More recently, it is the place where Raila Odinga and Mwai Kibaki finally reached a compromise, yeah, finally agreed, and this led to the formation of the Grand Coalition Government in 2008. All their hardline advisors were kept out of it, yeah, and the two gentlemen were sent to Sagana with instructions from the late Kofi Annan, you will not live there until you agree. Incidentally, Mwai Kibaki was the first Kenyan president yeah, to put Sagana State Lodge to a lot of use because it was too cold for Kenya's first president, Zijomo Kenyatta, whose doctors had recommended a warm climate to deal with these numerous health issues. Kenya's second president, Daniel Toretti Charap Moi, Hardly ever used it. In my view, it is the perfect getaway for a president to go and do some serious thinking over some crisis or something like that. And I suspect that President Uru Kenyatta, right now in Sagana, is doing the same. Maybe with some of his closest advisors, preparing for his major onslaught. Yeah, on central province, his own province. And in the minds of many Kenyans, what we should expect is Kivumbi central province. I don't agree. But before I tell you why I don't agree, let's back up a little. And let's consider the behavior of Team Tangatanga yeah, from the minute this particular tour of the president was announced. How have they been behaving? You know the thing about humans, if you're observant enough, they'll always give you telltale clues as to what they're really thinking. Yeah, Because most times we don't like to tell people what we're thinking. Many times we don't like to tell people our fears and our concerns. But if you observe somebody carefully, or a group carefully, you can read a lot. 
Now, in my view, what I have observed from Team Tanga Tanga can be summarized in one word, panic. And this in itself is a mystery. Why should they panic when the president is about to tour Central Province? After all, we know that the deputy president is extremely influential in Central Province. Team Tanga Tanga is very influential in Central Province. The perception that has been built up is that outside the Rift Valley, Central Province is home tough for Tim Tanga Tanga and the Deputy President. So, why should they panic? And the signs of panic are clear. 41 legislators here from the region recently wrote a hard hitting letter to the head of state. It is the kind of letter you write when you're very upset. Yeah. And one of the things they said is that they had not been invited to the Sagana meeting of central province leaders or central Kenya region leaders. And it is interesting that so far two of the leaders listed in that list have come out and distanced themselves from the letter. And they have said, we never saw such a letter. And we never signed such a letter. What? <laughs> but let us move on yeah, and leave that question unanswered. Maybe we will find answers somewhere ahead. Now, judging by what many Kenyans are saying, yeah, implying that the president is walking straight into a pit of dangerous poisonous snakes and that is going to get a hard time and that he might be very nervous, based on all that that Kenyans are saying, I am persuaded that they don't have a certain piece of information, which I will now give you. Before the president tours anywhere in the country, before he goes anywhere, let alone to a place where there's a political problem, yeah, I'm talking about just an ordinary visit, a tour. Usually, there are preparations, intensive and thorough preparations. And I'm not just talking about security. There is an intelligence report that the president receives, yeah, which he discusses with his handlers. The report will tell him what people on the ground are saying, what they are thinking, what some of the politicians in the area are doing. And then based on that report, action will be taken. The whole idea is that the president of the Republic of Kenya should never be in a situation where he's taken by surprise, never in a situation where he is embarrassed, and therefore arrangements are put into place to iron out any difficulties, any potholes that the president may encounter on his tour, so that by the time the president arrives there, everything is in place and everything is bound to go smoothly. No need for nervousness, whatever the mission is. This is what used to be done in the days of Jomo Kenyatta and in the days of President Daniel Toretich Arapmoy, when there were no mobile phones, no sophisticated communications the way we have today. Now, the highlight of this tour will be a meeting tomorrow, 30th of January, Saturday 30th of January 2021, at Sagana State Lodge. The meeting is of the Central Kenya Region Leaders, yeah. And it is a closed door meeting, meaning that the press will not be inside there. Yeah, the best that they can hope for is for a briefing, a press statement at the end of that meeting. Now, let us be very honest and blunt with ourselves about the politicians from Central Kenya region who say they have not been invited. Even if it was you, 
people have been talking very negatively about you, the people on the ground. They have been frustrating your development projects. And some of them have been taking over development projects that you have completed and telling the people that those projects are their own. They're the ones who instigated and organized for them to happen. And then after all this, you want to tour Central Province. Would you invite such people to your meeting, preceding the Meet the People tour of the region? Would you just be honest? Just be honest and answer that question for yourself. Now, this meeting tomorrow is not going to be an explosive meeting. Yeah, because obviously, it is a meeting of like minds. So mainly it's a meeting to strategize, iron out a few details. And although State House spin doctors would not like anybody to say what I'm about to say, it is the truth. This is a meeting of Team Keleweke, politicians in Central Province. That's the truth. And right here, we can find an important clue that may explain why central Kenya leaders within Team Tanga Tanga have panicked so much over this trip. We know that in central Kenya, in the 2017 elections, there were some very popular leaders within the region, within the Mount Kenya region, who lost Jubilee nominations under some very strange circumstances. These leaders ended up getting an audience with the president at State House, where they complained about massive rigging of the Jubilee nominations in central Kenya. Later on, the Jubilee vice chair, David Murade, told us that the entire Jubilee nomination exercise yeah, within central Kenya was rigged. And he told us by who? He told us that all the candidates that went through were sponsored, were supported, were aided by Deputy President William Samoy Ruto of Jubilee. In other words, in preparation for the 2022 elections, where the Deputy President knew he'd be vying for the presidency, he put his own people he placed his own people within the region. Yeah, and most of these people are the team Tanga Tanga politicians. Now, what that means is that there are some very popular politicians out there in the cold who are rigged out. And they've been on the ground since 2017. And I'm sure so far the going has been very difficult for them. Yeah, because turning the tide... Yeah, because there's a wave in the whole of central Kenya, anti-BBI, anti-President Huru, yeah, anti-Raila Odinga. And very surprisingly, anti the handshake, the very handshake that saved very many businesses owned by the Kikuyu community, countrywide. But now, the handshake that saved them then is the enemy. Yeah, it is the bitter enemy. Now, a simple question for you. Do you think these popular politicians in central Kenya, who were unfairly rigged out in the Jubilee nominations, do you think they're going to be at Sagana, at the meeting of central Kenya leaders? <laughs> of course, they've been invited. Yeah, and now you can start guessing where the panic may be coming from. Because the moment of truth is rapidly approaching. Indeed, it is already here. And based on the information I've already given you, do you think state house handlers can send the president somewhere to suffer defeat? <laughs> yani they send the president of the Republic of Kenya somewhere to get embarrassed and heckled. Do you think they can do that? Well, they can, 
But if they do, they will have a very good reason for doing it. Now, one of the things that has been put in the BBI, one of the things that has really been emphasized in the BBI, is based on the fact that the next president of the Republic of Kenya will not be a member of the House of Mumbi. And therefore, what has been done by the outgoing president is to make preparations to ensure that even without their own in state house, the House of Mumbi community will have no problem, no obstacles, and all that is bang inside the BBI. Now I have very many friends who are against the BBI and they have their good solid reasons. However, let us tell the truth. Can you tell me the reason why the Deputy President is so much against the BBI? Indeed it almost appears to be personal. Yeah, When he talks about the BBI, he gets emotionally worked up. Have you noticed? The reason, whatever it is, can be found in what I keep talking about on this channel. Something called human nature. Human nature is such that we will oppose something. Yeah, not for the solid logical reasons. But many times we will oppose it because we just don't like it for some reason. We hate it. Maybe it is associated with somebody we hate. Maybe it is associated with our political opponent. And if it goes through, it will favor our political opponent. Period. Now I already know what DP Ruto supporters are going to shoot back. Oh, Chris, you hate DP. Oh, your analysis is skewed. You favor the other side. Oh, you're not fair. Oh, you're not balanced. Oh, you've been paid by Team Keleweke, etc., etc. That's okay. I have a thick skin. I can take criticism. Indeed, in this business, if you can't take criticism, you have no business being in this business. And that is the truth. However, my response to Tim Tangatanga -tanga is very simple. Is the deputy president human? <laughs> yeah, answer that question. Does he have human emotions? You know, many of us find it boring to study human behavior. Yeah, psychology is very boring. But you see, there are so many interesting things that happen yeah, in psychology, human nature. Are you aware that there are very many women out there, very many, I'd put the percentage at over 50%, who did not get married for love? No. They got married for revenge. Oh, yes. A friend of yours came home one day. Your dad found him and beat him up. And you don't like your dad. You didn't like your dad at that time. So you decided, this man whom my dad has beaten up, I will marry him. Another example, your best friend fell in love with this man. And your best friend is very beautiful. She is more beautiful, in your opinion, than you are. And so, you decided to marry your best friend's boyfriend for revenge. Not love. Another example, your younger sister got married before you, they made fun of you, they said there's something wrong with you, they made life very difficult for you. Even your parents started asking you openly, when are you going to get married? What is wrong? Can we help? And this rich man somewhere expressed passing interest in them. Yeah, and they decided to get married to him, although he was already married, for revenge. Because their sister's husband was not rich. In fact, he was poverty stricken. So she decided to teach her family and her sister a lesson they would never forget. So she got married to this rich married man. And she drives back to the village frequently. Yeah, to remind them 
<laughs> to remind them of the time they made life difficult for her. Telling her that there was something wrong with her. So, watch our ongea sasa. They take a matatu when they travel up country. She drives. Very nice car. And they're always calling her to borrow money. Yeah. Ultimate revenge. Or is it? But that's human nature. And I can go on and on. Now, please don't feel offended if you got married for revenge. And you're taking this video. No, I'm not talking about you. I'm not saying it is right. But I'm not condemning you. You are human. Yeah. And human nature applies. You know, I can tell you stories about human nature that will make your head spin. Yeah, but this is politics. So let's focus on politics. <laughs> so, I suspect, yeah, that these highlights in the BBI that favor central Kenya, that were put there to protect central Kenya, whoever the occupant of state house is, those will be brought out to the people. Folks, whatever happens, the next four days are going to be super fascinating, politically. It is very possible, I'm not saying it's going to happen, it is very possible that the tide in central Kenya could easily turn. And there's something I'd like to highly recommend. Now, if you take this current trip to central Kenya and put it together with the contents of my weekly intelligence briefing number 46 and my WIB number 45, weekly intelligence briefings number 45, everything will come together like in a jigsaw puzzle. And you will totally understand the dramatic events that are about to unfold in our country. Many of you are already members of WIB. I highly recommend that you go back and review WIB number 45 and WIB number 46 and link it to this trip. And you will understand yeah, that this is the grand finale before the action starts. Now, please don't feel left out. If you are not yet a member, it's very easy. We have an amazing special offer. Only Kenya Shillings 3,999. Empress it to the number you see on your screens. Re repeated in the description area below this video on YouTube. Yeah, it goes to my assistant, Carol Peter. And if you want to use PayPal, you can use the email address you missed this at gmail.com. Yeah, all those details are in the description area below. And then make sure you text me your email address. Yeah, and I'll make you a life member. Pop! of both my weekly intelligence briefings and Club 1999, you will receive over 80 highly sensitive videos. Yeah, both WIB sensitive videos you've missed and Club 1999 sensitive videos you've missed. And a lot of things that have not made sense to you will start making sense to you. Go for it. This offer ends very shortly. I believe in politics it's good to understand so that when you go somewhere and you hear Kenyans discussing politics, you will just shake your head at the ignorance. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. Don't brag. Don't show off. Don't be proud. But it's good to be in the know. It's good to be woke. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your like. If you're not yet a subscriber, I would highly recommend you subscribe yeah, so that you'd never miss any single video I produce. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.